what kind of music was in, in the house growing up? Um, when I was growing up, it was mostly like cumbias and stuff. So like Sonideros, Grupo Cual, um, Aaron y su Grupo Ilusión. Stuff like that. Grupo Control. So I didn't really grow up listening to corridos. It was mostly cumbias and stuff. Would you say growing up with parents that weren't born and raised here in the United States affected the way you were raised? I think so, because I mean we have different traditions here than they do over there. So I was raised with Mexican traditions, like getting with family and having dinner together and stuff like that. So if they were to be born here, it would have probably been a lot different. What what has changed about the music? I mean, if you look back, um, when I first started listening to corridos, it's mostly pura base, like soft, simple, like uh, two beat counts and. Um, like they don't add a lot of stuff to it. It's just like pure, pure bass. And um, if you listen, if you compare it to the music that's out right now, they add more minors to it. Like antes it was pure majors and stuff. Now they add minors to it. They add different pentatonic scales and stuff. And um, I don't know. It has changed. I mean, the lyrics have changed. The type of like la letra that they write. <clears throat> Do you feel that Mexican living in this country is part of the reason that changed? Yeah, dude, it's obvious because if you go to Mexico even for a month, like there, it's a whole different lifestyle over there. Like obviously they're gonna write about what they're experiencing, and if you come over here, it's different stuff. Like it's more gang members and drugs and partying and stuff like that. And over there, it's like rancho and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this change affected the way music is being made in Mexico? I think so, because a lot of the music, I mean, they have an influence. Um, American music has influence on Mexican, Mexico music, too, because they like the music from here goes over there and they start listening to it. And it kind of influences how they start writing their music. También. So the two kind of get combined. Um, how do you think Los Angeles specifically has affected the change? Los Angeles has made a huge change because, like I said, of the lifestyle, it's different. Like, right now they're writing a whole bunch of gang-related stuff and about weed and drugs. So that's what most of the music you hear coming from here, from LA. That's what it's about. And Mexico music, it's still, it's still not at that point. They're starting to, but it's still kind of traditional. They're, they're changing in their own way too, but it's different. I mean, a lot of the new guys, like the kids that are growing up listening to the new stuff, the new stuff, they um, that influences them because they're the future of music. So they're growing up listening to this stuff right now, and that's what they're gonna write on, and they're gonna evolve at one point, I mean. But this is their influence right now. So um, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> I got off track. How has this change affected musicians playing? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then specifically, how has it affected the way you play? The way I play. All right, so that's kind of how it affects them because the new ge generation is listening to the new stuff. So that's they're going to grow up and they're going to become the next, like, grupos that are pegando. Mm -hmm. And then the, the way it has affected me, um, like, I incorporate a lot of the new stuff that I'm in into my playing, like all the minors and all the new skills that they're starting to use. Cause I don't really like playing pura base because I get bored sometimes, but it's so important to learn. So I like you still have to know it. Uh, which which groups do you think have really pioneered this change? Um, I think Legado Siete for sure, dude. Like they they're one of the mainstream artists right now that are kind of changing the way grupos are playing. Like if you compare the old ones like Tires del Norte with Legado Siete, it's way different. Like Tires Norte is pura base, like I said, major scales, major chords, and compared to Legados, minors and pentatonics and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, how has this change also affected like the business aspect? The business? The business side of music. Like record labels and stuff? Record labels, musicians finding hallows, groups group being made, groups finding gigs. Well, the money out there, how is this change affected that? For groups, like if you want to make it big, you have to start playing new stuff. Like, can't make it big playing the old style, the traditional way. Because people, that's what's on the radio right now, so that's what people want to hear. But if you're 
if you're just like local, people still want to hear that old stuff, the traditional corridos and stuff. So you still have to know a little bit of everything. It depends on, on what your, your goals are. Like if you want to make it big, you have to play the new stuff. If you want to get work locally, then you still need to know a little bit of everything. Specific subgenres have been technical. Um, I don't know, dude. <laughs> That's a hard one. Because, um, I mean, mainly corridos have been affected, but I, I'm pretty sure it has affected other styles. I mean, like Cristian Odal, I guess, he's kind of changing the way mariachi, like he's not playing traditional mariachi, it's like diff it's new style también. So I'm pretty sure it affects it in a way. I'm not really sure on it though, because I haven't t taken the time to compare both. The way, también the instruments they use too, like they're starting to use norteño instruments in mariachi and they're mixing it up. You didn't see any, they use acoustic bass now. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, they make, they have a new slap thing that they do. With yeah, them. they slap it like todo loche kind of. Uh -huh. Oh, the Bajo Loche. Bajo Loche, yeah. Yeah, I was like, what the hell? Is <laughs> yeah. It's, from what I've seen, I've seen a lot of change in Sierreño. Big time. Particular genre. Uh, oh, banda, it's hard to change Banda. Not gonna lie to you. It's hard, yeah. Because Banda, I mean, you can still have the minors and Banda and all that stuff, right? But it's still Banda. It's still Banda. It's like brass instruments and stuff. Oh, brass. And even like a traditional romantic that comes out now, it's still gonna like if a playing it, yeah because there's not much you could do with like exactly. yeah there's not much you could do like with bass you could add harmonics and stuff and you could add crazy stuff but with brass you're using your air so you can't really do a whole bunch yeah. that's what i've seen like, but the MS, they'll change slightly but they don't really need to yeah they don't you know so it's it's interesting because it's a change that happens but i feel like it only that's why i asked that question yeah i feel like it only really only hits like string instruments yeah, I'm, because you could experiment more with it, I guess. There's different stuff you could do. And like you get influence from other genres too, like rock and like jazz and blues. And you can't really add that to... I mean, I guess you could, but people haven't done it yet, so... Now, do you think this change would have happened if migration to the United States wasn't as big as it is? Um, Mexican migration. Here. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't think it would have because the whole reason why it's changing is because a lot of Mexicans are moving over here. So they're experiencing this new culture that we have on this side. And that's why there's more artists coming out and writing about this stuff. So it has a big, yeah, big impact. Yeah, yeah. So the, the idea behind that is it's a... Uh, music is always going to be changing. Yeah. Something that I've learned through music like cultural music yeah. is that when people leave where they're from to go expand music goes with music is a part of culture as much yeah. as food is yep. so like when Mexican music in general like a brief overview mm -hmm. before the Spaniards came they were just indigenous people yeah. playing little drums they had versions of xylophone but it was all stuff you can't yeah. you can sing when the Spanish came they brought African slaves and they brought their Spanish music yeah. They brought over the guitar, they brought over like accordions, they brought over all kinds of stuff. That was the German, not the Spanish, but they brought African Americans. African Americans have a way bigger influence. Africans have way bigger influence on Mexican music than I think people realize. Yeah. Because stuff like tamborazo wouldn't be possible without African rhythm. That's true. The drum, the drum beat that Africans brought over here is why you hear it. That's what you hear in tamborazo. Yeah. Zapateado rhythm is actually in two different time positions. Yeah. The people usually say it's a six eight because it's easier to count in six eight. But it's actually three four and six eight. Oh, shit. Like, um, dos, um, dos, dos, um, dos, yeah. Um, dos, dos. And that became that came from African that's African influence. Yeah. Um, and that started with a very simple form of a son uh -huh. in Mexico, which came from the trio. Yeah. And that came from the guitar and it became very popular in like little niches in Mexico. Yeah. With guitars. Mariachi didn't really make it big until it hit Jalisco. Mm -hmm. It hit Jalisco where Mariachi like, came. Blew up. Yeah. And Mariachi was really the first form of Mexican music. Yeah. Because they, they took stuff from African, they took stuff from Spanish, they took stuff from their tradition, mm -hmm. and they made it Mexican. Yeah. It's interesting. That is interesting, dude. Because they, it's not. It's not Spanish, it's not African, it's not necessarily indigenous anymore. Yeah. It's something completely brand new. They mixed it, yeah, they made and, it. And it's, it's still happening today. 
Yeah, they just see post the mic. Yeah, that's true. So as long as people are migrating, music will continue to change. Yeah, that's true. Experience has changed. Living in the United States, they came, they brought Mexicans living over here. They brought the they brought the language, they brought the culture, yeah, the tradition. Living here in the United States, they gave them different scales they can use, different ideas for harmonization. Second generation kids that are growing up here, so first generation Mexicans are like your parents who migrated. Second generation are like like you. You were born here, you grew up here. Yeah. And so second generation that are living here, growing up here, are growing up with so many different things that their parents didn't grow up. Yeah. Grupos that are popular didn't grow up. So everything you said is exactly right. Like I had a hypothesis already. Yeah. But I have to interview people and see what they think because okay. I can't. This part of when you're conducting research, you can't influence your. Yeah, you have, your to you have to get other people's. You have to get other people's opinions. And yeah. Speak. The other musician that I interviewed, his name is Fernando Tapia. He does. He has his record label. I don't know if you've heard. Yeah, him. he does videos and stuff, right? He's really, he's really good. Sick dude. Um, but I interviewed him and he gave me a different, different side of it. Yeah. What do you say? He's talking about the business aspect. Yeah. And this is kind of something that I was wanting to get out with you with business side. Like, he said Mexicans living in the United States, the more people came over here, yeah. the more acceptable it became to be Mexican in the United States. Yeah. And you know, Fernando is a little older, he's in his 30s or he's 35, 36 right now. Yeah. So he saw a different side of the discrimination that we did because I feel like I'm 20, you're 20. Yeah. So like when you were a senior in high school, I was like, I've got to be a freshman. Yeah. So like our side of things were a little different because we like discrimination was still there like I still saw it like it wasn't like whatever but it wasn't as big as it was if we had been 10 years old you yeah know what I'm saying? that's true so he saw like when he was growing up and he went to the club like you had to talk to these girls in Spanish and you had to talk in Spanish and you had to speak Spanish yeah so whereas now if you go to the club and ask somebody to dance you can, hey, you can say hey you want to dance that's true I, I never even thought of that dude he said and that's all because it became more acceptable to be a Mexican American yeah you know what I'm saying? So the language became more and more people started speaking Spanish. He said more and more people started listening to the thing because and then more and more people wanted to listen, so more and more people wanted to play it. Yeah. So because more and more people wanted to play it, there's more vocals that are being made, there's more music that's being made. He said that made competition way bigger. When, yeah, it's when harder up. to make it now yeah. than it was 10 years ago. He said it's like... You still, there's nothing to be wrong. It's harder to make it big, but you still make more money playing this style than anything else. That's true. He said, if you're a guitar player, or bass player, you want to try playing rock, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dude. You want to try playing jazz, that's even better. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. But this handle people is always going to be invited. It's going to be a king. It's going to be a wedding. Yeah. And they're going to want to book dancing or banda, sitting, whatever. That's true. And but he said because so many people like just want to play music, there's going to be clubs that'll be like. You have a decision to make. There's a group that's established that'll charge you six hundred dollars an hour, mm-hmm. and there's a new kid that do it for free or for fifty bucks an hour. Who's the club gonna take? Yeah, the guy that does it for free. Yeah, because they're still good. Maybe they're not as good as this group. Yeah, but they still get the jobs and people will dance. That's so, true. So shit like that has really fucked with like the music musicians. The yeah. Side of things. And dude, he taught me a lot. Like this interview because he's been he's been through a lot yeah and every musician is different what you've been through is different than what he's been through like he, he had a he, he has his own record label so yeah. he had to struggle hard to find musicians he struggled where he would find groups but then they would get taken away by like Rancho oh, shit. yeah and he'd be like well you know so he had to struggle to find people struggle to you know make music do things and he did it all on his own like any musician yeah he does it all on his own I bet, dude, yeah. It's not easy, like, yeah. Like, what are some of your experiences, like, just starting? Just starting, dude. Uh, well, like I said, I, I wasn't, I, when I started, I wasn't playing corridos either, dude. I was playing mostly quebraditas and cumbia. I was a grupo versatil. So, my, I never saw this side of business because it's totally different. So, when I was playing versatil, the, getting work was rare. I mean, I would get like one, maybe two gigs a month, maybe 300 bucks. But like you said, right now, everyone's listening to corridos. So once I switched over to corridos, I started getting work casi every day, dude. Even entre semana, there's always a party going on. Fines de semana, nightclubs always hit you up. Grupos always need 
even though there's a lot of competition, there's a lot of grupos, there's a lot of work out there también. So grupos are always hitting up random musicos at times because sometimes they don't even have their own band. They have to hit up random musicos just to make it to a certain privada. So there's, there's musicos out there hustling and trying to get their money and stuff. So that's one of the ways I've noticed it's changed. That's true, yeah. Because living in Santa Ana, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of There's people. a lot of Ross in Santa Ana, Nanaheim, Fullerton. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I grew up in Oman, so yeah. like, over there, you know, my girlfriend lives in East LA, over there. Okay, Miami. yeah. She's always a party on her street. Every weekend, there's a party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On her street alone, there's a party yeah. with the group yeah. all the time. So, it's out there. It's out there. You just yeah. kind of got to find it. <laughs> yeah. Go to it. You got to find out where it's at. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And Something I noticed is that this change, if you're not hungry, you're not going to get... Yeah, because if you're just standing by, you're not, there's other musicals who are always looking, they're hungry to get that work, and they're going to get it. If you just, yeah. Something that I've learned is that you have to make yourself as, as marketable as you can be. That's another side of it, yeah. So, like... Like you mentioned the other day in the video, yeah, like you're a brand. Yeah, your group was a brand. <laughs> your group was a brand. Even you, just as an artist, you're yeah. a brand. So, like... Right, but so like if you can be like a one-stop shop, yeah. how people are going to ask you to do things? Like, oh, you do video, you do audio, you, you write music, you do this, you do that, alright, like, I don't need to go to anybody. Yeah. If I need something, I'll call you. Mm -hmm. Cause it's easier to pay, you 600 bucks an hour, you pay four different people $300 an hour. Yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So you're getting more money, and they're saving money. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all about learning as, everything, as much as you can. Yeah, dude. If the people want to save a musician and this and that, but they don't care to learn their craft. Yeah. They don't care to get better, learn this. Well, you're not getting work because you don't sing. Well, whatever, I don't want to sing. <laughs> well, no, dude, learn how to sing. And yeah. More work. The more skills you have, the more opportunities you have. No, like, oh, like, oh, you play bass? Like, no, I don't play guitar. Well, I thought that you just can start on work. Yeah, so you see a lot of musicals learning all the instruments, accordion, guitar, bass. They know everything, dude. Accordion, guitar, yeah. bass, piano, they sing, they play yeah. this, they play that. It doesn't matter as long as you make it to dance. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you can do the crazy harmonic scale going down. That's true. Make it to dance, people will hire you. <laughs> That's true. Because oh, honestly, in all honesty, all that matters is that you can play in time. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. Yeah. You know, the changes you play in time, you get hired. That's true. People don't care about it. Yeah. Regular people don't care. Yeah, regular people don't care about the... the harmonic minors, they don't care that you can do a crazy alone over here. The only people who care are other musicals, but they're not the ones hiring you. No, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's... Yeah. And not only that, like... It's changed something that I know. It's like, even when you go to a private party... Yeah. More and more people, they don't care about the burritos. Like, some people don't care. A lot of people don't care. Yeah. They want a patel, a pango funga, they want all that. Yeah, that's true. So, like... You have people on opposite sides of the spectrum. Yeah. Because uh, I noticed the more traditional people will listen to the music. Yeah. Whereas the more, like, oh, I'm Mexican, but I speak English and Spanish, but Spanish is my second language. Yeah. They'll be like, all right, I want to Indian. Yeah, that's true. Whereas you have people in the middle that are like, I like rap, but I also like Mexican music, so I listen to Chuck Yeah, that's true. So there's, this change that I've seen has made everything more acceptable than ever said. Like, it's, made it so that everybody has something they can cling on to in Mexican music. Yeah. So like that, it's like they're rapping over a Mexican beat, you know? You have the corridos that are still being made by like those watches, you know, you have people that are making corridos. Yeah, yeah, ahorita de todo. They're making everything, they so like, but even group of like, you know, those watches in Sinaloa, they had to change the way they write music. I think everyone had, had to change at one point, change, or else they die off, yeah. Where, yeah. like those watches, they had to, like even some of their recent albums, they didn't talk about weed and shit. Yeah. So it's necessary because some some old grupos cling on to what they what they were playing and they, they die off like example I'm playing right now with Bucanas they used to be big they played Artenado and right now 
their shows. We go to some shows and sometimes it's empty and stuff. So, <laughs> like, yeah, they, they, every grupo needs to learn how to adapt or else they're going to die off because there's a lot of competition and a lot of musicals that are hungry. Yeah, a lot of competition. Yeah. It's true, though. So, like, as a musician, where, what have you done to give yourself the best opportunity to succeed? Um, like you said, just learn a whole bunch of skills. I know how to play bass, guitar, bajo quinto. I know how to sing. So getting my skills down, just expanding my horizons and then making connections I mean, with other musicos. So like, as soon as I play with them, like if I've never met an accordion player and I play with him, I'll be like, hey, what's up, dude? Um, you get down, let me get your number. And then we like, we make a, like we become friends or whatever. And then if I need an accordion player, I hit him up and then he hits me up whenever he needs someone. So like making connections, building up your list, that's one of the ways you get more work. And I mean, getting more clients, like going out to WIPAs and um, talking to different people and being like, oh, here's my business card. Whenever you need a musical, hit us up. And then that's how you get more work, just networking. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. You and Fernando taught me a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, Fernando's a different side because Fernando is very much on the business side. More business, yeah. Because he's he's not just playing in a group. Or he's not he, play, he plays in a group. Or he writes music. He does record label. Yeah. So he's thinking like he doesn't always think like uh, what do I like? He's thinking what's gonna make him money. Yeah. So like as a result, he has to listen to everything that's coming out, brand new, fresh, what's hot, what's the hot oh, yeah. five right now. And he has to listen to everything, and he has to try to write for what people are going to like. Yeah. Whereas, like what you're saying is just like making connections, and doing this, doing that, trying to figure out how I can adapt, trying to figure out. It's the same, but it's also different. I mean, our goals are different because I guess his goal sounds like he's more into like growing his label and getting people to listen to stuff and like become something big. But my goal. The music isn't really like making it big, it's just getting work as a freelancer. Like, if it happens, if I make it big, then cool, but that's not what I'm aiming for. Yeah, hey, that's some really good advice, man. Thanks, dude. Know your goal. Yeah. Because how are you supposed to get to where you want to get if you don't know where you're going? You, yeah, you got to know where you're heading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>